on August 12, 1960, an historic satellite communications experiment first proposed by scientist John Pierce was in final countdown. just when I had the basic idea. It was sometime prior to 1954. At that time, I was frequently asked to give talks on uh, space subjects. John Pierce is a professor of engineering at the California Institute of Technology. Before his retirement from Bell Laboratories in 1971, Pierce was a research scientist and administrator whose chief work was in electron devices, microwaves, and various aspects of communication. He also wrote science fiction under the pseudonym J.J. Coupling. Science fiction writer Arthur Clarke had proposed communication satellites as early as 1945. Without knowing of Clarke's proposal, Pierce began discussing communication satellites in 1954, three years before any satellite was launched. At the time, he was preparing a scientific paper for a meeting of the Institute of Radio Engineers. When I look back over my notebooks in late 1954, I find out that I was making entries about satellites on August 9th. And then I was calculating how much power would be reflected from a metallized uh, balloon. And I continued to think about satellite communication off and on. But for a while, in no very pressing manner, because no satellites had yet been launched. It was only when uh, the Russian satellite Sputnik went up late in 1957 and uh, the first American satellite early the next year that I began to stir around and push for the launching of a, an American communication satellite. The large metallized balloon Pierce had speculated on in 1954 was available by 1958. NASA had made one for atmospheric studies. At an Air Force meeting, Pierce argued for using the orbiting balloon to reflect signals between the east and the west coast. The east coast terminal, including a large horn antenna and sensitive receiver, would be built at Bell Laboratories in Holmdel, New Jersey. Scientists at the California Institute of Technology agreed to send and receive signals from facilities at Goldstone, California. The effort became known as Project ECHO. At Bell Labs, research scientist Rudolf Kompner and project engineer William Jakes brought together resources and people. Transmitting and receiving equipment designed at Bell Labs was developed in cooperation with Western Electric, NASA, Caltech, and other organizations. Hello, Goldstone. This is Holmdel calling. Calling Goldstone. How do you read me? Homdell, this is Goldstone. You can start the tape if you want. Start, uh, uh, Bill, start your modulation tape. This is President Eisenhower speaking. It is a great personal satisfaction to participate in this first experiment in communications involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO. Project ECHO proved a number of things. It proved that you could uh, communicate by voice across the country by means of a satellite. It proved uh, that you could use very sophisticated uh, receiving equipment reliably. Uh, the receiver was a Ruby Maser, and it was the receiver that later enabled Penzias and Wilson to do their Nobel Prize work. It proved that uh, you could send uh, pictures by satellite facsimile uh, pictures. It convinced people that this wasn't a wild dream. And the next reasonable stage seemed to be uh, to launch an active satellite. An active satellite receives, amplifies, and rebroadcasts communication signals. Calculations of the power needed by an active satellite had been made by Pierce in 1955. Telstar 1, the embodiment of this idea, was being readied for launch into space by the summer of 1962 less than two years after the ECHO experiment. Funded entirely by the Bell system and under the direction of E.F. O'Neill,
Project Telstar required hundreds of Bell Labs people. The most up-to-date technology was used. Guidance systems, traveling wave tubes, a scaled-up horn antenna, microwave transmission, and solid-state devices. Launch date was set for July 10th. Well, my feelings on the launch day of Telstar uh, were that this was just going to go. The Bell system had gathered notables at various uh, locations and uh, telling them that they were about uh, to participate in a demonstration of satellite communication. And uh, some of the notables, and I'm sure that a lot of the newsmen, were skeptical. They didn't believe that things could be built with such care that you just shot them up and uh, they worked. Star worked just admirably and transmitted signals in the very first pass over the Earth. The uh, first uh, transoceanic uh, transmission of television by Telstar was an entirely new thing. You, La you saw things in distant parts of the world for the very first time in real time. Satellites made it possible to communicate to very remote areas where you couldn't afford to lay a cable or even to put in extensive uh, land networks. But above all, it caught the uh, imagination of people. And here was something about space that was clearly of actual day-to-day -day use and benefit to ordinary people everywhere, to almost everyone. And the invention of the solar battery at the uh, Bell Laboratories was absolutely essential uh, to the success of Telstar and other early communication satellites. But above all, the solid state art was progressing since the invention of the transistor at Bell Laboratories. It would have been inconceivable to put into a satellite such as Telstar the complexity that it had using vacuum tubes. Today, many satellites are serving communication needs around the world, and more are planned. At Bell Laboratories, research to improve the capacity of satellite systems and reduce the size and cost of ground stations is continuing. For example, instead of blanketing the entire United States with a broad beam, the scanning spot beam satellite would use narrow, concentrated beams moving from one small Earth station to another. To my mind, satellites came from three sources, from an interest in space engendered by science fiction, from actual space activities, and from an interest in communication. When I first thought of satellites and promoted them, I thought they were a good idea. I didn't know how good an idea, but you just uh, can't hold a good idea back. And there's another thing. You can't tell how good an idea is until you've tried it. Uh -huh. 